money generally means that it's expensive money, so it's more than the bank rates. Bank rates have been going up, so what does that mean for you as a hard money lender? It means that rates are going up on that end as well. So for the last several years, we've been lending money or even borrowing money at like two points and 12% interest, so that's considered hard money and has been for a long time. Now, as interest rates have started to go up, we're starting to see hard money lenders, like you want to be, start to increase what they're asking. And we're seeing things go from two points to four points, from 12% to 14%, and it's probably going to continue to go that way for a while. So hard money means that it's an asset-based loan. You're going to take the value of the property and you're going to lend against the value of the property. We like to do it like this. So we like to look at a property and say, if I'm going to be your hard money lender in Orlando, Florida, I want to see that I'm lending at around 50 to 60% of the after repaired value. That's what I'm comfortable with. So that's what I've set up as my kind of criteria. Now, each and every one of you can determine what you're comfortable with. And in the area where you are, you'll be able to go to market and find out what works. But in Orlando, Florida, I can find plenty of borrowers who want to borrow my money at say four points and 14% interest and I will be in a first mortgage position. I make it super easy for the people that I lend money to and we'll get into who those people are in another section of this video. So stay tuned for that. So let me tell you about the risks and benefits of being a hard money lender because there are some, right? Any investment that you're ever gonna do has risks. You're going to lend based on an asset and you're going to lend to well-qualified borrowers and you're going to do this in a first mortgage position. So you're going to lend at a low LTV, which means that the property is worth $100,000 and you're going to lend fifty dollars or $60,000 on that asset. And if your borrower for some reason fails, you're in a first mortgage position, which means that you're in a very safe position. You should be able to either take the property back through a deed in lieu of foreclosure or foreclose on the property and get all of your money back out. So there's a really low risk that you're ever going to have to lose any money as a hard money lender. I would think that if you're doing that 50, 60% of LTV, you really have very, very low risk. So what's a first mortgage position mean? That means that you're the very first person who gets paid. If you go to sell your house, who gets paid first? The bank does. If you're a hard money lender, and you're lending, say, to a guy like me, a real estate investor, and I fix it up and then I'm going to sell it, who's the first person that gets paid? That's right. It's you. It's the hard money lender. And guess what? You didn't have to fix the house. You didn't have to find the house. You don't have to deal with all the contractors. You just lent the money. You put your money out there at a high interest rate, and you're getting a really solid return and a very safe investment. This is as close to passive as I've seen. And I do a lot of different real estate investing strategies. So who is it that you're going to lend this money to? And we have a very specific idea of who we want to be a hard money lender or a hard money partner with. We are looking for experienced real estate investors who have the deal of a lifetime. So if I'm you watching Robbie Krager, the flip flop flipper, and I've smashed that subscribe button and hit the like and all of that stuff. And I'm a part of this community. Copy what Robbie does in this case, lend to experienced real estate investors, find somebody who's wanting to borrow your money at the high interest rates, but has a proven track record. Somebody that you can look to and say, they're a good borrower because they've got plenty of money in the bank. They've done this many times and you're very safe. Not only are you in a first mortgage position, but you're lending to someone who's not gonna live in the house, someone who's gonna fix it up for resale. So those are the kind of things that we look for when we are lending hard money. I repeat, for me at least, hard money is not meant to be lent to people who are going to live in the house. So there are some reasons for that. And we talked about some risks earlier, like if people aren't gonna make a payment, you have to foreclose. If people are living in the house, instead of being real estate investors, then you have to foreclose on someone who's living in the house. And it's slightly more difficult than if you have to foreclose on somebody who was just a real estate investor. So we really like to lend to real estate investors, people who are not gonna live in the house. And it's actually part of the criteria that we put out there when we're going to lend people hard money. One other benefit to being a hard money lender is that your money is generally going to go in and go out, kind of like the tides. The tides go in, the tides come out. So you're gonna lend the hard money to a real estate investor like me, who's gonna go as fast as they can to fix the property up and get it resold. The faster that they go, the faster they get it resold, the quicker you get paid off, that's good. And then you're lending it again, getting more points, getting more interest rate. So typically, Hard money loans are from six months on the real short end up to a couple of years. We like to do one year term on our hard money loan deals that we do in Florida. So what does that mean? That means if the real estate investor who we lend the money to doesn't get the deal done, 
by the end of the 12 month period of time, do we take the property back? No. Do we foreclose on the property if they're making payments to us at the high interest rate? No, we don't do that. But what we do is charge a new set of points and we have some kind of penalties and things like that. So all kinds of ways that you can structure your hard money deal, but typically think of them as short term loans, which is like a one year long term and your money should be going in and coming out at least once a year. Let's jump into number two. The second thing that you need to do before you become a hard money lender to get yourself into something close to passive income and out of the rat race, acquire the skills and knowledge that it takes to become a hard money lender so that you can get to that passive income. Before you lend that first dollar, you're going to need to do a few things. You're going to need to acquire some knowledge so that you know what it is that you're doing, so that you're understanding what you're getting yourself into. So this is going to be key for you. Depending on where you are when you're watching this video, there are going to be different rules, believe it or not, in every state probably. But certainly there's going to be different rules where you are versus where I am, or even where I actually do business. There are different rules in Orlando, Florida, or all of the state of Florida, than there are on the island of Puerto Rico. We do business in both places, but in one place, we're required on the island of Puerto Rico, if we want to be a hard money lender, to have a lender license. We have to jump through some major hoops to do it. So what I'm trying to say here, guys, is that in Florida, I can be a hard money lender without a license. On the island of Puerto Rico, if I want to be a hard money lender, I need to have a license. Before I move on to the next portion of this video, guys, Again, don't take advice from me. I'm just a guy on the internet. Yes, I've done this stuff and I know what I'm talking about. I know that it can be passive income, but you need to be comfortable with this. This is your business and your responsibility. So you have to go and speak to the lawyers, especially about this kind of stuff. If you're going to start a business, you got to get the knowledge and you need to talk to a professional attorney who's going to tell you how to set up your business in your area so that you're safe and you're doing it in the best way that you can and you don't ever get yourself in any trouble. Something else that I want you to learn about before you lend that first dollar, I want you to learn about the underwriting criteria that you're going to be comfortable with. So for us, I explained it earlier in the video, how we underwrite things. And guys, we've been doing this real estate investing game for almost 26 years. So I have a skill set that allows me to know what a distressed piece of property can be worth and what its highest and best use is. You guys need to get yourself comfortable with that. But maybe it is that you're going to lend based off of an appraised value, a certain percentage of that. You're going to set up your very own underwriting criteria. The beautiful thing about being a hard money lender is that you're going to tell the real estate investing community and you're going to find real estate investors who are doing these kind of projects and you're going to tell them this is my underwriting criteria. You're going to set the terms with which you lend the money. So this is a really, really nice way that you get to have control of your money and you get to tell the people, this is how I will do this. This is what I'm going to set up. I want to lend based off of an appraisal. I want to lend at 50% of the appraised value or 60% of the appraised value, whatever it is that you're comfortable with. For me, again, it's always going to be in that first mortgage position. If I'm going to lend you a hard money loan, I'm going to be in first position. I don't want the headaches of being in second position. But there may be other people out there who are comfortable being in second position. If you're going to do that, I think you should be paid even more. So while hard money lending in first position is expensive money, hard money lending in second position is even more expensive. So you can make a higher return if you're willing to take the risk. This next step here is you're gonna develop a relationship with potential borrowers and other real estate professionals. So you wanna to go to your in your area and find the best real estate brokers, the people who are doing the most business. They're gonna know who the real estate investors are in town. They'll be able to bring you business. Also great places, and I talk about this on lots of videos, go to your local RIA and announce yourself as a potential hard money lender and you will meet a whole bunch of people that are doing business, that are real estate investors who are gonna bring you deals. You're gonna have to show up and network and meet people, become friends with them, go out and look at a whole bunch of real estate with people who are doing deals. I'm thinking if you've never done this before and you're meeting a new person who you're gonna lend to, a real life example today, I went and looked at a piece of property that I'm gonna likely lend money on and I wanted to make sure, one, the property looked the way that it looked in the video that I thought that the person who was doing it could renovate it for the price that they tell me that they're going to renovate it for, that I think that the property is worth after repairs, what they tell me that it's worth after repairs. So I did all of that due diligence before I'm going to lend them the money. Plus, I spent time with the borrower. I know the borrower. I have a reasonable expectation that they're going to pay me back. And here's the thing as a hard money lender, if for some reason I'm wrong and they don't pay me back, would I like to own the house at the amount of money that I'm lending? And so in this case, the answer is, yeah. Unfortunately, if the borrower doesn't pay, that'll be bad, but I don't see any risk for me eventually getting my money back plus all of the interest that I'm owed. 